Hi, I'm Jill Rupp from June Taylor. Have you ever wanted to make a quilt but were a little intimidated by the process? Well, now we've made it super easy for you with a product of ours called Quilt As You Go. Quilt As You Go is quilt batting that has a pre-printed pattern right on it. So if you remember the days of paint by number, it's very similar. Instead of using paint, we're using fabric and we're sewing our pieces right onto the batting. So as a beginner, we tell you what pieces to cut, we tell you what order to sew them in, and you can end up with beautiful quilt designs such as this one. And if you're an experienced quilter, you might need a quick quilt for a project, you just don't have time to plan it out, you can dig into your scrap bin and use our quilt as you go pre-printed batting, have a quilt in a no time. When you work with the process, you're actually quilting a square at a time. So for those of you who are quilters, it's super easy to do much more decorative quilting on a little square than it is a whole quilt. So you'll want to watch the process as well because I think this will be interesting to you too. The four designs that we have for Quilt As You Go, this first one is called Hopscotch. It's very simple. It consists of squares, rectangles, and triangles that are sewn together. And let me show you the other three designs behind me. This is called Rolling Stone, which is a combination of triangles and squares. Fair and Square, another really easy quilt to do, which is a combination of squares, rectangles, and triangles. And our beautiful Mosaic Magic. This one's a little bit more complicated, but certainly easy enough for a beginner to accomplish. So let's get started. The design we're going to work with today is called Hopscotch. So this is what the end product is going to be. Now let's show you how we got there. So what you're going to do is get your cutting tools out, a rotary cutter, a mat, and a ruler, and your quilt as you go. This is how it's going to come out of the package with six blocks per sheet. Now obviously if you want a bigger quilt than this, you can buy multiple packages and combine blocks. Um, if you want to make just a single pillow, you would just be using one block, for example. But regardless, the first thing you're going to need to do is cut your six blocks apart. And what you want to do is you want to leave a margin of one inch around the edge of each block. So what I'm going to do is go one inch from the edge of this margin, and I'm going to rotary cut that. Take your ruler and line that right up on the edge and your blade, and go ahead and make your first cut. And then I'll turn this a little bit in this direction. And again, I'm lining up the one inch line on my ruler right on the edge of my pre-printed quilt as you go block. And I'm leaving an inch margin on all four sides as you can see. I've got two more sides to do here. And I'll go ahead and get that cut. This is a polyester batting that we're working with. There's the design printed on one side and shortly you'll see how we're gonna utilize the fusible that's on the other side. So continue to cut till all six of your squares are cut out with an inch margin on each border edge. Now that we have our blocks cut out, we're going to get to the fabric part. So the packaging tells you about how much fabric you're going to need for each six block design. And we're going to start out by taking our fabric and pressing it. If you're going to be using this quilt, you're definitely going to want to pre-wash the fabrics because when you pre-wash the fabrics, any of the shrinking or dyes that haven't come out will come out. And then what you're also going to want to do is you're going to want to starch your fabrics. We love starch savvy because this particular starch was designed to work with quilting cottons. It's clear, it's friendly to the environment, and it doesn't turn white like some starches that we use when we're pressing our clothing because again this was designed for quilting cottons. What adding starch does is it stiffens the fabric so it makes it easier to cut and eventually much easier to sew. It basically secures your pieces together during quilting and in quilt as you go when we're using our batting we're not able to press with our iron directly on the batting. So we always want to pre-starch our fabric pieces so that we can actually finger press versus using an iron to press. So once your fabrics are all pre-washed and starched, what I like to do is spray it with starch, give it a couple seconds so that it soaks in. 
and then you're really going to get a great result. If you don't, if you don't let it soak in, what's going to happen is you're just going to press the top of the starch off the top of the fabric and you're never going to get the full effect of it. So pre-starch your fabrics before you cut. Once that's done, you can take your fabric and we'll put a couple layers together, turn over to the cutting side. And the first thing I'm going to cut are three and a half inch squares. I need one three and a half inch square out of this fabric for my six blocks. So totally, I'm going to need three three and a half inch squares. So I'm going to start out by squaring up the edge of my fabric here. And I'm simply going to take my ruler and mark on the edge like this and cut one, two, three and a half. This is easy to do because my marking lines on my cutting mat are so easy to use. Turn this in this direction, line it up on one of the lines on my mat. And again, I'm going to first start by squaring up the edge of my fabric here and then I'll cut three and a half in the other direction. All right, one, two, three and a half. Line that up and cut. Now, I know we've already pre-starched the fabric, but let's take our squares and one more time, let's go ahead and just give it a little bit more starch. Starching multiple times is a great idea because look at how nice and stiff that keeps my fabric versus when you haven't starched it, it's very flimsy and much harder to deal with and much harder to use along with the batting. At this point, you can go ahead and cut out everything else you're going to need for your six blocks. So what you'll be doing is you'll be cutting rectangles out of the yellow and you'll be even cutting some squares and then cutting those in half diagonally for triangles. So you want to make sure all your cutting is done first and ready to go. Cut, starched, and ready to go. Now that all my quilt pieces are cut out, we're going to cut a backing for our square. We're just going to use a plain white muslin today. And this square needs to be cut 16 by 16. So the next step, we'll take our batting and we will turn it over to the back side. There's an actual fusible on the back. A fusible is an adhesive that's going to be activated by our iron. So we'll put our backing, making sure we cover the batting on all four sides. And I'm going to press the backing. I'm going to press the backing onto the batting. And to do this, you don't need to push down hard on your iron. You're gently going to glide your iron over the backing so that it fuses itself to the back of the block. Now you'll hear that noise. I'm using what's called a burst of steam. And that burst of steam helps heat the adhesive, the fusible adhesive, on the back of your quilt batting square. And that will secure the backing. So when we say quilt as you go, this truly is quilt as you go. We already have got our backing on. Now let me just show you this. If I pick this up, you can see it's stuck to the back, which is what you want. And then you're going to flip it over to the front and we're going to start our quilting. So the first thing we're going to do is find square one, which is right here. And we're going to lay that down on our block. Now, if I were you, I'd just grab rectangle number two and rectangle number two is going to be sewn to block one right sides together so the right side of the square and the right side of the rectangle like this now we're just going to pin that into place and to do that you just want to um, you want to go through the top layer of the batting you don't have to go all the way through you just want to go right through the top layer to secure those two pieces and then what we're going to do is we're going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance right down here so let's go over to the sewing machine and we'll put our block underneath, put our presser foot down and sew in a quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to back tack here. And I'm going to back tack at the end. 
and we'll take our black out and I'm going to cut our threads for you real quickly so you can see the progress we've already made so far. We'll cut off the backing threads as well. Let's bring this back over, take our pins out, and our first step is done. So when I bring this over, look at how nicely the edge of my yellow rectangle is going to line up with the edge of my block. Now, when I was telling you before about pre-starching, I can't, I can't touch my iron to this batting or it'll melt. So what I'm going to do is take, at that seam line, take your finger and just finger press that seam open. Because you've pre-starched your fabric, it'll make it lay nice and flat. So then my next step is I'm going to take my second smaller yellow rectangle, right sides together like this, and I'm going to go ahead and sew this in a quarter inch seam allowance and then we'll flip that open. And I've actually done that here for you. So let me bring up the next block. So I sewed in a quarter inch, brought that back over and look how nicely that lines up to the edge of my, my line. And again, finger press that open. Now the next step is I will be taking our longer rectangles, four and five. So let's work with four first and right sides together like this. I'm going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance here. Take my rectangle, position number five, right sides together, sew in a quarter seam allowance down here. When that sewing is done, you will have this. So I sewed, opened, finger pressed, sewed, opened, and finger pressed. Our block is already coming together. It's quilted on the front, and when I turn it over, it's already quilted on the back. The next step will be pieces six, seven, eight, and nine. And those are the triangles that we've cut. So we'll start with position six, put our triangle along here, and you wanna center this triangle over the ends, stitch in a quarter inch, and we're gonna be flipping that up, and we're going to do the same with seven. So you can do six and seven automatically. Again, sew in a quarter inch seam allowance. And I've got that done for you right here. That's what this looks like. Sew in a quarter inch, flip it open, and finger press those seams down. We're gonna now add eight and nine. Again, right sides together, sew in a quarter inch, right sides together, sew in a quarter inch. And look at our black coming together nicely. Now, what I do like to do is I do like to just keep things pinned into place as I sew. It's just a, a little bit easier. Um, so my next step will be taking 10, 11, and then 12 and 13. So I take my larger triangles and I center them over 10 and 11 and sew in a quarter inch seam allowance here and here and I've got that done for you here. So we flip those open, pin them in place, and go ahead and do your finger pressing so our block is nice and flat. Last piece, and we're already done with our block, is 12 and 13. Those go right sides together, centering them like this, sew in a quarter inch seam allowance. When that is done, you have your block. Here it is completed from the square to the rectangles and then we add the triangles on. Essentially this block could be done. We've got quilting on the front and if you turn it over you'll notice it's already quilted. You can see it on the back. If you wanted to leave it like this, this block could be complete and ready to be put together with the other blocks. If you'd like to do some additional quilting, quilting means decorative stitching, you can do that at this point. I'm gonna show you an example. This is another design and we're gonna showcase this at the end. This is our mosaic design, mosaic magic. If you are an experienced quilter, now is the time where you might wanna add some additional quilting or decorative stitching on your block. We've used the little pebbles, which are the little circles and just a kind of an echo quilting, which is a back and forth stitch we stitched a flower in the middle with some circles in as well. It's so easy to do 
machine quilting with a small block like this versus a huge quilt thrown over your shoulder. So for those of you who are experienced, you may want to take this block and do some addi additional decorative quilting or stitching on here before you assemble your quilt. Now is the time to do that. Or in the case of what we're going to work with today, we're going to let it just like this. When your six quilt blocks are all sewn together, run a zigzag stitch around the outside edge of the block, all the way around all four sides. That's going to help secure those four corners in place and it'll keep your block stable so that we can go ahead and do the sashing. The next step is we're going to want to mark a half inch from the edge of our batting. So take your ruler, find your half inch mark, put it on the edge of the batting, and make a line on the four sides of the front and four sides of the back. I'll just do a couple here for you. So I'm finding the edge, getting my half inch mark on my ruler, and marking a half inch away from the edge. And this is what we're going to use as a guide for our sewing line. So all four sides on the back, all four sides on the front. The next step we're going to do is follow the instructions to cut our sashing strips. And we'll be cutting three strips that are two inches by 14 and three strips that are three and a half inches by 14. Once those are cut, starch them because, again, you want to have these nice and stiff and easy to sew. So go ahead and starch. You can even use a little bit of steam. And let's set aside our two inch strips for now. Let's take our three and a half inch strip and I'm going to add a little bit more starch to that one. Fold it over and press wrong sides together. So I'm actually creating a casing and you're going to see how this comes into play as we connect our quilt blocks. This folded strip is actually going to finish off the back. All right, so now we take our quilt block. We take our single two inch strip and right sides together, right side and right side. I take the raw edge of that two inch strip and put it on the half inch line that I've marked and pin that into place. So I'll just put a couple of pins in just to make sure it stays where we want it. My raw edge, again, is a half inch from the edge of the batting. Turn it over to the other side of the block. And my raw edge, again, is on that half inch line that we've drawn. My folded edge is over toward the center of the block. And let me just pin that into place. Just put a couple pins in here. The next step is we're going to sew through all layers. We're going to sew through our folded strip, our quilted sandwich, and our single strip. Everything is right sides together. So let's go over to the sewing machine. We're going to sew in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And so let's get started here. I'm going to begin sewing and I'm going to back tack along here. And let's continue to sew through all layers. position up. And there we go. Got our threads both at the top and at the bottom and take our pins out. I have three pins on the front and I had the two on the back. So what we've done is now we have our, this is our back with our folded edge and this is our front. We're going to take that front sashing strip and another one of our quilt blocks and right sides together, right side of the block to right side of the block. Take the other raw edge of the front sashing strip, take that other raw edge, put it on the edge, or put it on the marked line that you marked a half inch in. This casing will stay free, and all we're going to do is sew the other end of this strip to our secondary block. So raw, raw edge is at the half inch line that you've marked. And remember our 
quilt squares our right sides together put a couple pins in and we'll sew that in a quarter inch seam allowance so let's go ahead and get our machine ready here and I'm gonna quickly sew this for you and then you're gonna see your quilt already begin to come together at the end cut our threads on front and back and this is the fun part we'll take our pins out and look at this we have already sashed our two blocks together on the front it's completely finished let's turn over to the back this is where our pressed casing is what we're going to do is take this fold it over like this and at this point you can either whip stitch this down just a little whip stitch or you can take a piece of fusible tape put it under here and you can go ahead and press that down so now we've actually joined our two blocks together and this next step we're going to do is join our rows so now that we have two rows complete we're going to join one row to the other and have our sashing strip in the middle before we do that make sure that the sashing that you just sewed between the blocks are flush with the edge I see I have a little bit hanging off here so I'd like to cut that flush just so it we're all everything is even before we start to sew our rows together so we're just going to cut off that little tail right there and it looks like I have a little tail on this side as well so I'm just going to cut that a little bit. Put your ruler right on the edge of your batting and just go ahead and cut that little tail off. Now I'm going to take my two rows and we're going to join them. So let's start <clears throat> with the first row and we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to cut a 2 inch by 28 inch piece right sides together and we place that a half inch from the outside edge of our batting on one side and we can go ahead and just take a couple pins and pin that into place so it's the exact same process that we're we're using um, to join the rows as we did to join the blocks raw edge to the half inch mark and on the reverse side you'll take your 28 inch strip um, by three and a half. I've already folded it in half and I have already starched it and pressed it and the raw edge of this goes on that half inch mark and we can pin that into place. Remember your folded edge always points toward the center of the block and then we're going to sew through all layers. So again I've got my raw edge on one side with my single strip right sides and I've got my folded edge here so what we're going to do is go to the sewing machine and we're going to sew in a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down here and I've got that done for you in this step right here so let's see what happens I have our sashing strip sewn right sides to this block on both sets and then let's flip it over to the back and this is our folded casing and again what we're going to do is take our folded casing bring it over like this you can even grab your spray starch again and that's how we're going to finish off the back of our block always make sure if you're pressing with a cut and press that you have the correct side up the pressing side in this case not the cutting side and then we're going to go ahead and press over that back casing the last step is to attach that third row so you're going to attach the third row in the same manner and then again if your if your um, fabric for your sashing is sticking out a little bit you can go ahead and trim that off I'll just use a scissors in this case and trim that off when your quilt top is assembled all your rows are done and all your blocks are done we're going to bind our quilt and that's the last step we have binding instructions 
in the package. We also have them on our website. But very generally, I'll explain how we make binding. We cut strips either two and a quarter or two and a half. In this case, we have cut two and a quarter. And binding strips are folded wrong sides together. You always want to use starch when you're pressing binding because, again, you want to keep that as stiff as possible so it sews nicely and, and glides smoothly under the feed dogs of your sewing machine. So now I'm making a simple binding strip here. And that's what you use to finish off the edge of your quilt. We show you a simple, easy method of binding in the instructions. There are many ways to bind, but this is probably the easiest. And let me quickly explain how to do it. But again, you can see that right in your instructions. What you're going to do is trim this batting a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I'll just give you a little example of what we would do here. Um, I'm using my quarter inch mark and go ahead and continue to do that all the way around the quilt. Then take your, your pressed binding strip and what you can do is actually put this on the edge of your quilt like this and stitch in a quarter inch seam allowance and then we'll take that pressed edge after that's done, pressed edge will be like this and bring it around to the back of the quilt and whip stitch it into place. And that's how your quilt will be bound. For our fair and square block, you'll notice on the batting that there are dashed lines printed on the batting. Anytime there's a dashed line, it means something needs to be pre-pieced. So we're gonna have to sew something together to make this whole section. In this case, it is the rectangle and these two squares that are sewn together to make this row. And those are pre-pieced. So you're basically going to put right sides together, right sides together, and before anything, you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance here and a quarter inch seam allowance here to pre-piece that. Now I've done that right here for you. There are my sewing lines. I flip that open and then you can go ahead and press anything that's pre-pieced. Make sure you use your starch when you're pre-piecing. And uh, you can even flip that over and get the back nice and flat. So this will be just like using one of my pieces. So I'll take my batting. The next step is I will put my, fuse my backing on, like you see here. And this starts out with a square in the middle and we attach two triangles finger press those open and then we attach four and five triangle finger press those open the next thing we'll do is add six and seven rectangle I've got that done here for you unpin these so that you can see this was flipped over sewed in a quarter of an inch flip back and finger pressed open and again we always just keep pins to keep everything in place you don't have to pin all the way through just through the top layer now we're going to add that pre-piecing on that we just did, right sides together, sew in a quarter inch seam allowance, and finger press that open. Do the same on the other side, and you will have your block complete. At this point, if you want to do any additional quilting, you do it block by block, so it's super easy to put under your sewing machine needle. And we did a little extra quilting on this one. We did something called echo quilting. As I was piecing my block together, I had my stitching line here, and we did two other stitching lines here and here, just to give it a little bit more visual interest. And then you'll notice in the center, we did a couple of circles, four circles that joined together to make a flower in the corner blocks and in the center. Let me turn this over to the back side, and it perhaps might be a little easier to see how that stitching looks on the back. So this one added a little additional quilting. Let's move on to the next block, rolling stone. The rolling stone block, as you can see, has dotted lines in here. Let's break this down to the simplest. All that is is two triangles sewn together. Those are called half square triangles and we tell you exactly how to do it in the instructions. 
Um, we start our block by putting a square in the center, sewing two triangles, two and three, finger pressing those open, sewing our other two triangles on the other side, as you've seen here, and look, our block is already starting to come to life. The next thing we're going to do is six and seven, and those are pre-pieced. And what those are pre-pieced is, again, I'll break it down for you. There are two half square triangles. So what it is, triangle sewn to triangle, triangle sewn to triangle, and then those two pieces sewn together. Those are then attached to the sides of the block, six and seven. Eight will be like this, so I will be right sides together, sewing in a quarter of an inch, and then finger pressing that back here, and I will be doing the same here as well. And then my last is I will be sewing the squares in the corners. And again, on this block, take a look at what we did. We did some additional quilting here in the center. And again, echo quilting. We just mimicked that design of that little point right inside about a half inch away from the edge. And it really gives it a, a little bit more of a quilted effect. I think it's extremely pretty. And last but not least is our mosaic magic. Okay, mosaic magic. You can see that there is some pre-piecing here. This is probably our most difficult block, but as a beginner, you can surely do it. Let me put this in your direction. We're starting out with a square in the center, and onto it we've sewn a pre-pieced section. This is called flying geese. So we prepare the flying geese, which is this block right here, and right sides together in a quarter of an inch. Flip that over, finger press it down. And right here, right sides together like this, quarter of an inch, and we're going to put that down as well. And then you're going to see my next two steps, four and five, are a single strip, as are six and seven. That's very easy. And those are done here. This is my single strip here and here. And then another pre-pieced flying goose block um, that we've done, and that will get put right here and flipped over to make that row. And then finally, we'll finish off with our contrasting corners. This block is so pretty, um, made out of all solids. And when you do solids only instead of prints in your fabric, the quilting that you do really, really shows off on solids because you can see the beautiful stitching pattern so much easier. Um, and the solids that are on the market today are so beautiful to sew with. So that's four different designs. Let's take one last look at our quilts. With Quilt As You Go pre-printed fusible batting and starch savvy, you can have a wall hanging done or small crib size quilt done in no time. Buy new fabrics at the store, use what's in your stash, be creative, do additional quilting or leave it just as it is. Real quickly go through the designs again, I want to show you something. This was a quilt that we started out with called Hopscotch. And we have used all very much tone-on-tone -tone fabrics that almost come across as solids. Look at what happens to this design when you change it up a little bit. And you use really big prints mixed with solids. It gives it a completely different look. So go ahead and experiment with different scales of fabric and different colors. You can even fussy cut something to go in the center of your squares if you want, or focus on a certain motif. So this is the same quilt, hopscotch. And then moving along, this quilt back here is called Rolling Stone. That has a lot of our half square triangles in it, and that's a beautiful block. Um, again, we've, you've, you, we've used just the six pieces. You could make this larger by using more than one kit of quilt as you go. Moving to the middle here, this block is called Fair and Square. I think this block would be so pretty, even as a table runner, half of this, or six pillows, I think would be so pretty out of this block. And again, here we've used tone-on-tones -tone to get the look that we want. This would look completely different if you did it all in solids. Moving to our last block, Mosaic Magic, this is one we did all in solids, and we did that because we really wanted to showcase the beautiful quilting here. We also did one other thing different, is we did the narrower sashing. And you can do the narrower sashing or the wider, whatever you prefer. That's what we love about Quilt As You Go. You get to be the designer 
and you can sew something quick and beautiful with professionally finished results in no time.